my name is Rob, and I hate chickens. Why would I hate chickens? Now that is a good question. One for the ages. Did you ever in your life think that you'd be playing in a fantasy football league with me? No, but I can tell you this. I'm very excited to hopefully destroy you. Yeah, bro, I'm gonna get wrecked. Yeah, bro, I'm about to get wrecked. <laughs> I didn't say I'm about to. I said I'm a get wrecked. It's the same thing. It's a totally different set of words. You're a different set of words. Are you ready? <coughs> I don't know if you heard, but I just turned into an animal. Sounded great. Hello and welcome to Cast Royale, the Clash Royale podcast for casual players. I'm Rob. I'm Joe, and I didn't update my line. <laughs> Welcome to Cast Royale, the Clash Royale podcast for casual players. I'm Rob. And I'm Joe. And this week, we discuss our weeks in the arena, our thoughts on the update, a pretty fresh deck, and more. Boom. Boom. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Overcast, CLNSmedia.com, or wherever you get your podcasts, we hope you enjoy the show. Episode 70? (laughs) That's like a seven and a zero? Yeah. Let's go, baby. I said last time, cue the party horns. Dun, 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 dun. Now we can celebrate, right? Yeah, it's pretty interesting like watching you celebrate when there is no music actually playing. Well, there's music in my head and that's all that matters. Not if I can't hear it. Rob, we need to celebrate together. We are in this together. We are a unit. We are one. We are the being that is cast royale. Right. Let me ask you a question. What? If a tree falls in the woods and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Obviously, yes. Let me ask you a question, Rob. Mm Mm-hmm. If you're sleeping... Yep. Does it still get sunny outside? Even if you can't see it? (laughs) (laughs) Just listening to you and watching you try and bring that together was incredible. That was good. You still didn't answer my question. Uh... Yeah, I guess so. It obviously still gets sunny outside, Rob, even if you're (laughs) sleeping and you can't see it. So if a tree falls in the woods and no one's around to hear it, yes, it still makes a sound. Absolutely. You're right. And that is how you intro 70th episode. Good thing it's a really big milestone. So let's dive right in. How was your week in the arena? Hmm. Is it odd that I haven't played ladder more than twice this season? How can that be true if you're at 4,500 trophies? Spoiler alert. Well, that's because I haven't played more than two or three matches since the season reset. So I was, you know, originally at like, you know, 4,900 or so, 5,000 trophies. And when we got reset a couple of weeks back, I haven't played since. So you know how you kind of get like reset halfway down in between where you're currently at and 4,000. So I have not played much ladder. Uh, And that's because I've just been getting my, you know, cycle crowns from, uh, well, my cycle crowns for my crown chest and my cycle chests for just unlocking from 2v2s. And I've really mm-hmm. just been like trying to enjoy um, playing 2v2s and just trying to level up new decks. I mean, I can play the Mortar Mauler on the ladder. I'm just getting very frustrated with it recently. So instead of kind of going down that path of just frustration all the time, whenever you enter a match and you get counter decked, you're just like, ah, this is terrible. <laughs> I just I just stay away from it. Uh, so Fair. now I play 2v2s and I just yell at my opponents all the time. It's um, much better to yell at your opponent than to yell at your, your deck matchup. I can appreciate that. You sound like me, actually, because last time I was working a lot on 2v2 and other decks because I didn't want to play on ladder. Sometimes, Rob, you give great advice. Sometimes. Well, the little brother never leads, so it's not surprising that you're doing it after I started it. Boom. Mm-hmm. Aside from that, I finally have enough cards to level up my Fireball to max, level 13, dude. Dude, that's awesome. That journey was a fun one. I can now max that out, and I am currently moving on to leveling up the Mega Minion and the Balloon. Wow. And I am using tokens whenever I can. 
And tokens are fantastic. I don't think we mentioned it on the previous episode when we talked about kind of like how they worked, but you and your clan mate don't both need a token in order to make a trade. In fact, you can just have one person have a token and initiate a trade, and then anyone in the clan, whether they have a token or not, can accept it. Um, I find that it's much better when you coordinate token trades, like, hey guys, I need a balloon. Who needs a cheeseburger? And then you, <laughs> you, know, you request a cheeseburger. Because when you put a cheeseburger out there, People that want a hot dog aren't going to get it. You know what I mean? Right. No, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. <laughs> no, exactly. no, that was literally the best possible analogy I could have given. Yeah. Um, so that's been fun. And, dude, you're not going to believe this. I have probably the coolest news I could have ever even dreamed to say while on this podcast. Cooler than telling us that you're in Master One? Much cooler. Hmm. Tell me. Our clan. Cast Royale 2 hit the legendary rank in Clan Wars. Ooh, boom, boom, dude. Dude, we made it to over 3,000 trophies, and everyone was super excited. And I got to tell you, man, for like a group of casual players that just like log in every day, play together, try and learn and grow, you know, just have fun. There's certain people in the clan that are really, really ridiculously good, and others in the clan who don't play that often. And really don't care about winning and losing, but just literally want to have fun, right? Mm -hmm. And if our clan can do it, I truly believe that any clan can. And it was so awesome to do it. But then you get to like the collection day battles and the actual final war day. And you realize that none of your cards are level 12. (laughs) Right. And you're pretty much versing everyone and anyone that have like maxed out decks. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um. So the matchups were really tough, and that led us to losing very quickly. So now we're currently out of the Legendary Clan Wars, but it was still fun. No, dude, that's awesome. Uh, I'm so impressed with you guys. Fantastic. Great job. Thank you, sir. But aside from that, how was your week? Uh, Pretty good. Um, I also have not been playing ladder much, but I did make sure that I played enough to get myself back between 45 and 4,600 trophies, so I'm sitting around there. Um, I've been playing a lot of 2v2, like I mentioned last episode. Uh, I mean, I've just been having more fun playing 2v2 because I get to try different decks, whereas like we always say, the Mortar Mauler is the only deck currently that we can take on the ladder without risk of losing any trophies, right? So um, probably going to keep doing that for the foreseeable future, unless something drastically changes, like I uh, inherit a lot of money and (laughs) and can buy a lot of uh, things to upgrade my cards. What do you mean? You don't just have like, you know, hundreds of thousands of gold just chilling in your pocket? I don't, not like you. <laughs> uh for the record, everyone, Joe is comfortably sitting on four hundred thousand gold. Who told you that? I, I have I have little birds. How do you even know what I have? <laughs> it's not like it's not like you have the ability to like log into my account or anything. How do you know what I have? Did I show you a screenshot? I must have showed you a screenshot. I warged into your mind, mm. and any fan of Game of Thrones will understand that reference. I like Game of Thrones, but that was weird. <laughs> okay, um, so I also got a log for my season end chest, so that was pretty cool. That gave me four out of ten, uh, and then I got my first legendary trade token, which was phenomenal. And of course, I traded it almost immediately to get another log. So now I'm halfway there. And I'm very excited about it. Yeah, that's fantastic. Did you get the legendary token from the war bounty chest at the end of the war? Yeah, it was actually the first time that we got the war bounty in the clan war. So that was pretty cool. I think many, many people in my clan also got other trade tokens, different rarity levels and whatnot. Um, But I think I was one of the few to get a legendary one. So that was very, very exciting and a, a nice little bonus when the update first hit. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, I mean, these tokens are fantastic. And like I said, the coolest thing about it is you don't have to have two people with tokens to initiate a trade. So if two people wind up having tokens, that's two different trades that those people can do. Um, So you just think about what this does to people's decks and their ability to level them up quickly. It's fantastic. Yeah, dude, it makes a big difference. Although um, I do agree with you that coordinating is the way to go. uh, But it's really hard when you say, hey, I'm looking for this specific card, but I don't have a trade token. You know, I wish there was some sort of indicator that would tell you that. Um, but 
who knows? I don't know what their plans are for this feature in the future, but uh, right now it's working out pretty well as long as you coordinate, like you said. Agreed. Mm-hmm. And I bought the Barbarian emotes from the shop. Ah! Mm, I don't know if I like these things, man. What? Well, first of all, did you like my impression? Oh, I mean, obviously. The impression was great. Right. Okay. So now, now that my ego is boosted, what do you think about the emotes? <laughs> <laughs> right. There's two, there's two parts to this, to this madness. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, like the, the one where he's got the sword up in the air, like I get it. It's kind of like, you know, attack or charge or something. Um, but I just feel like everything is just like screaming and yelling now. Like you got a barbarian that screams and yells. You got a, uh, a hog that screams and yells. You got a hog rider that, that screams. And then I, I, the one that I do like, to be honest with you, is the one that is like picking his nose. <laughs> You would, you would really like that one best. I do. I really do like that one. It's kind of like you can use it when you totally mess up or you can use it as BM really bad. And either one works out well, I think. I tend to use it more when the other person is doing a lot of BMing, especially when they start the game with like the, the, the giant emote that does like the crushing hands, like they're pounding fists and stuff. I just, you know, pick my nose. Yeah, I mean, it's got its benefits. Not about, I like the other ones, I just, eh. All right. I give it like an 8.5. Joe gives it like a, what, 4.7? 4.7 4. seems very precise, so yes. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, and then I promised the boys that I would mention this because it's loosely Cast Royale related, but Joe and I are in a Cast Royale 2 Fantasy Football League. Bada bada boom! You are very excited about that, and it is a boom type of moment. I am very excited because I'm not really like into sports the way that you're into sports. Like I'll watch them passively, but like I don't know who anybody is. You could say any name, and it doesn't matter what it is. I would think that it's a real person in a game somewhere. Like Sergeant McGillicuddy? I'd believe it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. So, so we do have a fantasy football league with Castro Real too. It's pretty cool. You know, it's just another way for the community to kind of get together outside of the game, still hang out, do things together. Um, and plus, what well, it's just for fun. Like you know, we're not doing it for money or anything, but it's cool. It's just another way to interact and talk about things outside of the game, which is really fun. Yeah, and again, I've never done it before, so this was a great way to kind of learn. And plus, everybody's been kind of helping me. So, like you said, it's a it's a nice team building exercise, which. That's the main reason why I did it. It is a team building exercise. And every week you destroy a team member. And I hope to very soon destroy you. I won my first game. That's great. I lost my first game. No, no, no. I, I, I did win my first game too. So we're both 1-0. Ooh, all right. The Boom Bros are skyrocketing. We're cruising. Smooth sailing <laughs> in our fantasy football league. <laughs> Only to soon hit the trophy death spiral Ooh. of fantasy football. <laughs> Lose 10 straight. Yeah. We're going to get counter decked. Absolutely. No doubt. Boom. Boom. Uh, and last but not least, before we move into the fun stuff, uh, just want to send out a PSA that we are taking off on September 30th, which is when episode 71 was supposed to come out. We have a wedding, so we will not be around. So the next time you will hear us in your speakers is, wait for it, October 14th. Put it on your calendar, guys. We'll be back. And if you miss us in the meantime, join our Discord because uh, we'll definitely be there talking with everybody. All right, now that that's out of the way, are you ready to jump into some topics? Let's do it. All right. So with the update, we got the Goblin Giant Draft Challenge. Yeah, we did. Dude, how did you like this challenge? I lost almost as quickly as I started. Yeah, see, that sounds right. Because this challenge was hard. It was hard, and it just it threw me off that it was 100 gems to keep playing, so I gave up. So you didn't try it more than once? No. I only have 300 gems. I'm not going to waste a third of them on this challenge yeah. when I know there's going to be better challenges. No, I get it. I just felt like I, I, I tried it the first time, and I think I only got three wins, and then I just lost three in a row. Um, mm. So I, di I didn't even get the tokens that were available to get. Because I think the first... I, I forget exactly what the structure of the like the winning was, but... If you won eight games, you were able to get a common, rare, and epic token. Oh, I did get all three of those. So I didn't really lose as quickly as I started, but I, I didn't win. Okay, so you got eight wins. That's what I got, too. If you would have gotten ten wins, which I did not, um, we would have gotten a legendary token. And I think at twelve wins, you just got 
the goblin giant card. I think 20 of them, right? Yeah, I think I think you're right. So again, the first time I tried, I got three wins and it was brutal. And then I was like, you know what? I'll just try one more time for the heck of it because I just wanted to play because I, I wanted to try the card out and just see the card. And plus, I was like, you know, it'd be really cool to get these tokens, right? Because once you see what these tokens can do and how other people are just trading them in clan chat all the time and how much how many cards they're getting, you're just like, why would I not try it? So I did, and, and I'm glad I did because I, I was able to get a ton of uh, loons out of it and mega minions, which is what I was going for. Nice. Um, and that actually brings us to the next challenge after this, um, which was the Goblin Giant Practice Challenge, which I found it interesting that they threw this challenge in after the main challenge. I thought it may have been cooler if they offered both challenges at the same time so you could see that you were going to win your 100 gems back so you could try the main challenge again, but I don't know. Yeah, that's a good idea. I just feel like if they did do that, then people wouldn't play the Goblin Draft Challenge as much because why would you pay gems to play with the card if you can just literally play with the card every single time? The Goblin Giant Practice Challenge forced you to use the card in your deck, right? The mm-hmm. draft challenge gave you or your opponent the card, but not both of you. You know, plus, like with the draft challenge, you're not building your own decks. So I just feel like if they gave you the option to play with the card for free, most people probably would have just played it for free and not spent any gems on it. Yeah, maybe. But again, I would like to see it happen once to let them experiment and see if it actually makes a difference. But regardless, not to complain on timing, this challenge was great and very much appreciated. I love. I love the fact that you didn't have to worry about wins. That's the best kind of challenge. Uh, You just had to get 20 crowns. And at the end, like we've said, you get 100 gems. So if you did play the other challenge a second time, you got those gems back. So now I'm going to ask you a question. So I, I totally agree with what you just said. So instead of putting them together, right, like having both challenges go on at the same time, because I, I just think that gets a little funky. Mm-hmm. Why not make it so that the Goblin Giant practice challenge was first? Yes. Because then everyone would be able to automatically and very freely play with the card, see if they like it. I guarantee you that some people, more people, are probably going to play with the card and love it. And then it'll make more people probably spend more gems to get the card in the Giant Goblin or the Goblin Giant Draft Challenge if it was second. Plus, then you also get your free 100 gems before the Draft Challenge, and then you can use those gems to try and play. Right. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I totally agree. That, that would have been a great way to do it, too. But neither here nor there. I do agree with you. I love the two challenges. I think it's really cool. But you want to know what else was really cool? And I don't think we mentioned hmm. this before. The card is unlocked as soon as it enters into the game. So you didn't have to actually win the draft challenge or get the card from the practice challenge in order to unlock the card. Once it was released into the game, anyone could have opened any chest and obtained the card. You know, you know it probably wasn't max level or even level capped at that point for tourneys, but you were able to unlock the card and get it in your collection, which means you can practice with it in friendlies. Speaking of which, I got the card from the first chest that I opened after the update. Yeah, see, that's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty fantastic. I was very, very excited. Right, especially because you and I didn't get it from the challenge, so I'm sure once you opened it up, you, it was like Christmas. You're like, oh my gosh, this is great. Especially since it's an epic, which are pretty hard to come by sometimes. That's why they're epic. Right, exactly, Joe. So, with the update, we also got a new mix of Collection Day battles. Yeah, we did. So now the game includes the famous Classic Deck Mode, which is probably my favorite out of every game mode that is available in this game. We also got Double Elixir Draft, Triple Elixir, 2v2 Draft, as well as 2v2 Rage. Yeah, I actually think that this is a a good mix of game modes, right? I think there's a a, a pretty good amount of level-capped ones and 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 mirror is gone and don't get me wrong i think mirror is cool like the the mirror mode i think it's cool it has its place but the deck builds that they give you are just really ridiculous sometimes yeah and you know at the end of the day you're using the same deck as somebody else and if you have no win condition it just gets really frustrating so they they got rid of that and they put some other you know three of the five are level capped which are fantastic which means that you don't have to worry about bringing in random decks that don't have proper levels into the into the mix so uh, my favorite mode is actually the double elixir draft mode because mm. double elixir is just a pretty cool element and I'm a fan of level capped and like picking cards and drafting. I tend to lose most of my collection day battles though, dude. I don't know why, but it's been 
really hard, like, <laughs> playing against people um, in these level caps. So, I don't know. I don't know why, but it's uh, still my favorite mode. Well, you're also in a higher tier now, so it, the competition's definitely going to be stiffer. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, I, I guess that makes sense, right? Because when you play level cap, so, so the way that the, the matchups work is when you play modes without a ladder cap, you face people that are around your trophy count. Interesting. When you face people in level capped modes like the classic or the draft or the 2v2 draft etc you get matched up against people with similar or close to your war day wins Uh. so because i have a ton of war day wins i get matched up against people that are just ridiculously good at this game and i can't beat them well now it makes sense why you're losing a lot i mean i'm losing a lot too so don't feel bad i feel like it happens to everybody i most of the time i've been getting like one out of three in wins i'm in the same boat one out of three you know if i get two out of three i'm i'm feeling confident if i get three out of three it's just a really great day it's a it's a party it's a party it's a party (laughs) up in here exactly i actually really like the double elixir draft too because um i like draft a and b you don't realize how much the double elixir makes a difference because like when i'm playing that game mode i'm like Nothing really feels that much different. And I'm like, oh, I actually have a lot of elixir now all of a sudden. And it's not too rushed. Like, I feel like triple elixir, it's so rushed and I can't keep up. Yeah, the, the, the triple elixir goes to, you know, from zero to 100 real fast. But the, the 2v2 is just like the right amount of, it's just the right amount of resources. I don't find myself like leaking elixir all the time like I do during triple elixir. Yeah, I'm the same way. So speaking of new things that are in the game, let's talk about some impressions of the new update. So first up, I actually didn't realize this before the update came out, but once it came out, it was very clear because it was right at the top of the screen. Uh, I didn't realize that you could only store up to five of each rarity of the trade tokens. Yeah, how do you feel about that? I mean, I guess up front, I was just like, huh, why would they limit that? And then I was also like, hmm, I mean... I guess there should be a limit, and five seems like a fair number. I'm just kind of surprised that it's five across all of them. Why? I don't know. I guess I'm just, I just had this weird thing going on in my head, and five now seems normal, but when it first came out, again, this was just like instant take, first impressions. Like, I was like, huh? All of them are five? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I I agree, I do think it's interesting, but but I think it's made so that if you're trying to max out that card, right? Mm-hmm. You can use the tokens to get about 25% of the cards that you'd need to max it out you know, if you have five tokens. So if I have five epic tokens, you can trade 10 at a time so I can get 50 balloons if I have five tokens. And the amount to max out your balloon would be 200, right? So 25%. Rares are going to be the same way. To max out a rare is 1,000. If you use all five, you get 250, right? Because you right. get 50 per token. So again, 25%. Um, to max out a legendary is 20, so you can get five again, 25%. And then it also works with commons, right? 5,000 to max out the common, but you can get 1,250 with the, you know, five tokens. So the, the, the point is, I guess if you max it out, you get, you know, 25% of the total you'd need to get from level 12 to 13. See, I mean, that's really all I needed, man. I just needed an accountant to explain it to me. Yeah. And I didn't mean to draw that out so long. It (laughs) would have been very simple to just be like oh you get 25 percent of the max but I, it just it felt weird not explaining that so hopefully it helped no 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 no. i i totally appreciate it because it made me understand it better boom and i'm sure it helped other people too at least one other mission completed Mm-hmm. but how about the fact in 2v2s there's two things here right one in 2v2s you can now see your teammates elixir next to their hand and that little display of their elixir and their hand, their cards in their hand, no longer blocks the King Tower's HP. Yeah, that's, that was actually a, a small oversight that I always noticed, but uh, I'm glad that that has been fixed. But also, with the introduction of showing the, uh, your partner's elixir count, it now defaults to showing your partner's current four cards in their hand which previously you had to tap on their name in order to bring that up. And I kind of think that a lot of people, and I don't really know why, a lot of people probably didn't know that that was even there because it's like a really discreet, inconspicuous button that you isn't even really a button. Right. And 
now it's on by default and you can tap it again to shut it off which i appreciate but i love that it's on by default yeah no i, I totally agree and I, I i think that you're right i think people don't really just explore in this game like they don't just go out of their way to like explore like oh let me just click here and i think if people did click there and didn't know about it it was like oh they accidentally clicked on the screen and it it showed up i do think a lot of people knew that it was there but i think just forcing you to see the opponents or your allies hands First of all, it helps coordination. Um, it just makes playing so much easier. You could be like, oh, well, they threw a goblin barrel. I have nothing to defend this, but they have a log. So I'm not going to drop right. my lumberjack for no reason. Exactly. It also helps because sometimes, and I'll be completely transparent, sometimes I go into battle and I forget in the old system to turn on my opponent's deck. So, like, I'll be halfway through a match and I'll be like, oh, I should have been doing this the whole time. Good thing he'll never know. It's the little things, little simple things that make the game so much easier. That's why they call it quality of life. Boom. So how about the fact that you can now sort your cards by their level? So I think that that one's cool. Um, I think it really helps me with building decks for war. Um, because, you know, in war, it matters a lot what cards you're using especially because there's a smaller card pool having cards with higher power level are a little bit more usable we'll call it right they have a much bigger impact on the map if things are you know compared to things that are under leveled but i don't really use this for making my ladder deck just because i feel like with ladder i need max cards so <laughs> at this point uh at least where i'm at with my trophy so and i know what i have maxed already so <laughs> That's pretty fair. At this point, it's just like, I know what I've got, and I know what I want to get maxed, so I'm just like focusing on those things. So, But I, but I do think it really helps me with, with war. Right. Uh, that's a good point. Um, you know what I would wish that they would add? What? The ability, not to sort, but the ability to filter to cards that have an upgrade available. So like anything that you have an upgrade available for? Like would have, you know, that has that green bar, it would show up at the top. No, not even sort them that way. Just filter. Oh, so you wouldn't even be able to see the other cards. Yeah, because I'm trying to not keep thinking of things that add more times that I have to press this one button to cycle through all of these different sorting options. So I feel like a filter option would be really cool. Also, there should be a search function. I mean, we're getting to the point where we're almost at 100 cards. What are they going to do when we have over 100 cards and we can't search for a card? I couldn't agree more. You know how easy deck building would be? as Instead of having to scroll through 90 cards, you literally just type in prince or mortar <laughs> or yep. goblins. And, you, and, and then you just plop it in. Because in the current format, at least in the, you know, I have an iPhone 8 Plus, so I, it's, it's really long. So I can see, if I were to search right now, I see the first four cards on the bottom. So I'd be able, in theory, to search for a card. It would show up on the screen, and I would be able to just click it, and then I'd be able to click Use and put it in my deck, all without having to scroll anywhere. No, instead, in the current system, you have to swipe, 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 swipe. Oh, that, wait, did I, where's the print? Swipe down, swipe down, swipe down, swipe down. Oh. Nope, I must have missed it again. You know how many times I've missed cards? <laughs> Forget about missing cards. There are times where I think cards cease to exist because oh, I can't find them. Me too. I'm like, I literally can no longer find this card. I think they removed it from the game. But it's always the one card I'm looking for. This is like when your glasses are on the top of your head and you don't know where they are, but they're right in front of you. Right. Where'd I put those? Yeah. They're on your head, Rob. Exactly. Also, dude, we got crazy offers from the shop. Did you buy any? I'm assuming no. No, I did. I did. I bought the epic one. What? I spent ten dollars and I bought the epic one so that I could get the epic token, so that I could get more loons, get sixty k gold, and get a chest. And guess what I got from the chest? Don't wait for it. It's a Sparky. <laughs> and it was terrible. And I hated everything about it. But you know what I did say to myself? This will be really good when I want to trade it to someone if someone ever wants a stupid Sparky. Bingo. Super Nun is laying on the floor laughing so hard right now, eating chips on the beach. Yes, he is eating chips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that stinks. I can't believe you bought it. I'm shocked. Don't be shocked. Be happy. Be happy. Be healthy. You know what that's the slogan for? Pop quiz. What? Cheerios, man. Honey Nut Cheerios. Rob, let me tell you, you are a wealth of knowledge that just goes so deep into the abyss of knowledge that I can't keep track of how much stuff you know. 
Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I appreciate that very odd compliment. Yeah, I don't know if it was a compliment or just a statement. I'll take whatever I can get as long as it sounded nice. I'm not really sure what I was saying. Well, I mean, (laughs) it's not really important. Let's talk about something that is important that's actually been bugging me since it started. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. What do you think about these new Clash Royale notifications that keep coming through on the game? I'm not a big fan, but I don't hate them as much as you hate them. So, I mean, hate's a strong word. Hate is the word that you use to describe your affinity for Sparky. No, that would be loathe. I loathe Sparky. Oh. Okay, all right. Much more hateful than hate. Right, I agree. All right, so hate's too strong of a word for me for this, but I will say, here's the notification that I received three days ago. Are you ready? Uh, yep. Picture of an Inferno Dragon on the right-hand side of the notification, and it says, Inferno Dragon breathes fire with a fire emote, but he also wears a helmet because that is dangerous. (laughs) That is informative. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I also got another weird one about the archers and their arrows being on point, so I should take them into battle. I mean, listen, I get that they're trying to get people to play the game, and these are really cute. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I kind of like them for the humor part of it, but like, man, they're kind of spammy, and I really would appreciate the ability to shut them off. I-, I agree. They could be seen as spammy. I would like to shut them off if I could, but I just feel like sometimes they're not that relevant. Like, sometimes they'll be like, oh... Make sure you log in and get your War Day battle. And I'm like, I already played my War Day battle, dude. <laughs> right. Um, I, I, which actually brings me to my bigger point, I think. There should be different notification settings in the game that you can turn on and turn off. Like War Game notifications, uh, Crown Chess notifications, these new weird, we want to make you smile before you open the game notification type of things. Like, I, don't, I still don't really understand what they are. But again... A lot of games have different notifications, and they also have different options to shut specific notifications off. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, you know, I, I think when someone's in, in clan and they put a 2v2 request in clan, it'll be like, oh, join or help, you know, Rob play a 2v2 battle. And I'm like, why is that? An, why, why do I need to get notified about that right now? Right. So I appreciate the fact that that is a thing. But you should be able to shut that specific notification off. Right. It probably helps someone log in. But like if if I'm out of the game and I don't want to get those notifications, you're right. I should be able to shut them off if I want to. Exactly. So that's my pet peeve for the week. Boom. Tonight, we are sponsored by RX Bar. Rob, RX Bar wants to build things the right way. RX Bar believes in the power of transparency and lets the core ingredients do all the talking with all of them listed out in the front of the package. You'd likely recognize RX Bar on the shelf. They're the ones that have egg whites for protein, dates to bind, nuts for texture, and other delicious ingredients like unsweetened chocolate, real fruit, and spices like sea salt and cinnamon. And man, it turns out, real food ingredients actually taste really good. And if you didn't know, egg whites stand out as a great source of protein that is easy for your body to absorb, which makes it great for a number of occasions, like breakfast on the go, or a snack at the office to get you through your 3 p.m. slump, or even your pre- or post-workout snack. And what's even cooler is that RX bars come in 14 delicious flavor varieties, such as mango pineapple, chocolate sea salt, coconut chocolate, peanut butter, and so many more. And they even have seasonal flavors. That's right, man. And I got to tell you, the first flavor that I tried was the blueberry flavor, and I loved it. But all it did was make me want to try every single flavor that came in the box. And my favorite flavor that I did get to try is the chocolate sea salt, because it absolutely had the perfect balance of sweet and savory. Plus, all of the ingredients that they list on the front of the packaging, you don't even taste. It's like the perfect blend of everything good. And best of all, our listeners can get 25% off their first order by visiting rxbar.com slash cast royale and entering the promo code cast royale at checkout. Once again, that's rxbar.com slash c-a-s-t-r-o-y-a-l-e and entering the promo code Cast Royale with no spaces at checkout. Thanks a lot to RX Bar for sponsoring our show. All right, dude, it's time for our meta check. Meta check. That's right, our boy, Sir Devin Lord Christmas, comes to us with another awesome meta check. And this time, he's got something special for the two of us. Joe, tell us what's going on in the arena. That's right, man. So, our boy, Lloyd Christmas. Sir Devin, 
hit us with the numbers, the latest and greatest of what's been going on in the current meta. And this time around, we're going to look at the numbers for the last two weeks, and then we're going to throw in a little segment that he likes to call Clashly Feud. Ooh, I like it. I like it. It's kind of like Family Feud, but more Clashly Feudy. Which would also be appropriate, because, you know, the brother thing. Agreed. So to the numbers. <laughs> hey, Rob, I got a question for you. Yeah. Got cart? <laughs> Get it? It's like got milk, but more like got cart. Got it. Dude, because the cannon sure doesn't. The cannon cart usage plummeted after its latest nerf, sending it from the usage rate that was hovering around 25% to below 5%. Ooh. This card had its place in the sun for a couple of weeks, but it looks like its latest reduction in range will send it rolling back into obscurity. Isn't it crazy that a little tiny weensy nerf to their range can make a card stop being used by 20% in the meta. That's nuts to me. It's crazy. But the cannon cart wasn't the only card that saw its usage plummet. The Valkyrie has sunk like a rock, dude. The use rate for the last two weeks are down by 34%. Previously, this card was used at 38% and now at a little teensy weensy 4%. Maybe they should stop nerfing it. Well, that's what happens when a card becomes overpowered and then maybe becomes just more balanced it just becomes mm. used very little but aside from that there were a couple of cards that have seen an uptick in usage lately and those cards have been the royal ghost and the ever steady hog rider of course with the hog rider on the rise go ahead and throw in all the cards that go along with it for example the ice golem ice spirit fireball log etc and then he writes for us hog cycle users what a time to be alive <laughs> <laughs> Boom. If only I could say that as a mortar player, you know? Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you. All right, so now we're done with the numbers, and Devin wants us to move on to this week's game, which he calls Clashly Feud. And in Devin's words, the rules are simple. Rob will ask Joe the first set of questions. Joe will ask Rob the second set. And then the final set will be for both of us. As always, everything is tournament standards to the game. All right, so I think you have to ask me questions first. Are you ready? Uh, probably not, but let's do it. What four cards die to a poison, but not a fireball? One point each for each of the four answers. <laughs> I don't know. Do you need a lifeline, Joe? Do you want to call Regis? No, no, no. I'm going to try a few. Hold on. I, uh, Musketeer, Electro Wizard. I, I really want to say the regular wizard. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to say it. Regular wizard. Mm hmm. And. This is just one more. Yeah. So currently you have Electro Wizard, Musketeer. Yep. And the regular wizard. And the regular wizard. And then wizard. when you figure out the fourth one, let me know when you want to lock in your answers. I, I think the last one is. Am I allowed to scroll through my Rolodex? Sure. As long as you don't tap on the card. No, I won't. I won't. Doesn't die to a fireball. Uh, but like, dies to a poison. I know. I really want to say Mega Minion, but I think it's probably the Ice Wizard. But I don't know. But that's all I've got, dude. So, so I think I'm, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to go with what I think. And I'm going to say Ice Wizard, Musketeer, E-Wiz, and Wizard. Final answer. You get three dings and a... <clears throat> Dang it. What di what doesn't die? Why are you danging it? That was fantastic. You got three out of four. Uh, I should have got all four. I really thought I knew it. What, what Was it the Mega Minion that I missed? No. And you know what's funny? Huh? You said one of them, but there's another version of the same card. Are you ready? What? The three Musketeers. Oh, gosh. I thought they were all like the same. Like, I didn't even think <laughs> that that was an option. That's so stupid. <laughs> That's okay. I'll probably only get one of the ones for my question, so rock and roll. I can't believe it. I I was reading this as troops, not like cards, but the question was what cards. He's a little trickster, Devin. He's he's good at getting you. He's That's really sure. good. He's really good. Yeah. All right, next one up. You ready? Mm-hmm. So this is my question. Yep. Here we go. What four cards have a range of seven tiles or greater? Uh, hmm. Okay, one of them, one of them absolutely has to be the princess. So that's one. Okay. What's the range? 
Seven tiles or greater. Oh, seven or more. Interesting. Oh, wow, I'm dumb. The mortar. The expo. Oh, no. Seven, huh? Seven or greater. Yep. I can look through my, my Rolodex. Yeah, you can you can Rolodex it up, dude. And I'm assuming this excludes all spells. I hope so. It must. Um, hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Magic Archer. Final answer? Hmm. What did I say so far? What did I say? Princess, Expo, Mortar, because I'm dumb, and then Magic Archer. Those were your four answers. Final answer? Uh, yes. I lock them in. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> you got Whoa! all four right, dude. I could have sworn you were going to say the Royal Giant. Oh, that way I did. I, I never liked the Royal Giant, so I would never think to talk about it. All right, so you're definitely beating me right now. Four to three. Well, that's not, I mean, yeah, I am, but not by a lot. Right. Well, now we go into the final feud. This should be fun. So Devin writes, this is a negotiation. Who can name the most flying cards in the game? Rob will give a number for how many he thinks he can name, then Joe will counter with a higher number. This will continue until one of them calls the other to do it. If you name all that you said you could, you're awarded a point for each one you've named. If not, (laughs) you lose a total of two points. So you can either win a bunch of points here, or you just screw up totally and lose two points. (laughs) Yeah. This is kind of cool. I like this one a lot. So we we can go back and forth with saying, I can name five of them. Yeah, and then I say, I can name seven of them. And then you say, oh, well, I can name 10 of them. And then I say, oh, well, I can name 11. And you're like, if you don't think you can really name 12, you can just be like, all right, do it. Okay. All right. So we can't think about it. Are you ready? Ready. Who, who starts? You. It says you. I can name five of them. I can name 10. Do it. Dang it. (laughs) Really? I could have sworn you were going to be like 12. And I was going to be like, do it. All right. Here we go. All right. I'm just going to try my best to go lowest to highest elixir. Ready? Ready. I wonder if like bats from the Night Witch count as additional bats. Well... He says the most flying cards. Card. So it's got to be a card. So I would say no. All right. So bats is one. I feel like I need to list them. Yeah. Write them down as I go. I'm writing them. Bats. Don't worry, bro. I got you. Minions. Yep. Mega minion. Uh, minion horde. Baby dragon. Flying machine. Balloon. Lava Hound. Oh my gosh, I have eight right now. <laughs> Are there any in the game right now that you know that I haven't listed? Bats, Minions, Mega Minion. Oh, Inferno Dragon. Ooh. Number 10. I really, really, really hope that there's one more out there. <laughs> like I... <laughs> I really, really hope... Why did I say 10? Why did you say 10? <laughs> See, your your strategy was to, to, like, swindle me. And my strategy was to start low and work my way up. Yeah. I don't know, man. Can you think of another one? Is there another one? Uh, I'm really drawing a blank here. All right. Should we, should we reveal the answer? I know what it is. Tell me. The skeleton barrel is a troop. I don't think that's considered flying. Uh, it's literally flying. Right, right. I I mean, I I get what you're saying. If the balloon is flying, that's flying. The balloon literally is flying, though, and stays in the air for the whole time. Well, this thing can literally fly over the river, so there's that. I'm going with it. And if I win because of a technicality, I'll take it. If you win because of a technicality. Okay, are you ready? For me to reveal the answer that Devin hid in white font. Is there another one that I'm missing? I don't know. I The the, the things are, are hidden. Oh, you don't even know the answer. Right. 
Okay, I'm gonna say the I'm gonna say the tenth is the flying skeleton barrel. Are you ready? I I hope I'm ready. He says that there are nine flying troops. Come on! Baby dragon, balloon bats, flying machine, inferno dragon, lava hound, mega minion, and minion horde. And now we need to check the tape and see if the skeleton barrel is considered flying. Yeah, like think about it. The lava hound. The Lava Hound, right, it attacks buildings, and it doesn't say it flies, it just says targets buildings. And it clearly flies. Skeleton Barrel says the same thing, man. I think I stumped Devin at his own game, and I like it. Okay, so here's my awkward argument. Are you ready? Nope. Devin's answer literally says nine total. You said ten. Right, but maybe he just didn't know that the Skeleton Barrel was a troop, dude. You know what we're gonna do? We're going to ask the Discord. I agree. Because I feel like the argument could be said either way. You can make a case for both sides. Yeah, I mean, I get it, right? It's it's more of like a, a troop carrier, right? Like, it, it, it unloads. And they wind up on the ground. Right, but I mean, once the balloons fall, the skeleton barrel falls, it, it flies there, and, you know? But I, again, I, it's not like a flying troop, because the barrel itself isn't really like a troop. Right. No, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you. I just, I think... Uh, I think we need to phone a friend here. I agree. Mm-hmm. We should get Devin on the podcast next time. <laughs> we should, let's just call him right now. Ooh, we got a nibbler. Cameron. Cameron's giving us the answer. Are you ready? Are you going to hold your fate in Cameron's hands? See, now that we both corrected the fact that he called it a ground troop, I think he realizes he's in something deep. He's in something <laughs> real deep. He's in something real deep. He's been yeah. typing and untyping for the last minute. <laughs> Uh, so, this <laughs> is what Cameron, our friend, said in Discord. Hmm, the card is probably flying. That's how it starts. Tough question, though. So he agrees. But he did say first that if it were a troop, he'd consider it a ground troop. But but the card starts off flying, so it could pass the sniff test, dude. Mm, it, could be, mm-hmm. it could be either way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I will tell you, okay, I have, I know what we'll do. Are you ready? Tell me. I win round one, and you win round two. So now, Devin must come up with another sort of feud question for the next meta check. Oh, I like this. So we're doing a, we're doing a, a rain check on yeah. the, on the, on the family feud finale. Yes, that's what, that's what's happening right now. I like it. All this effort, all this time for a rematch. Yeah. I'll see you on the other side. Thanks a lot, Devin. We're very excited for another set of questions. <laughs> and thank you to our friend and our buddy Cam for giving us the insight we needed to make this call. And you're right. And also, Number Cruncher just chimed in and wrote both. It's a tricky one, man. I'm serious. <laughs> this is kind of like, you remember that, 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 that whole thing that went on when it was like, what color is the dress? Like black and blue or white and gold? That's the yeah. skeleton barrel. It's like the audio one, Laurel or Yanny. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. This is like the ambiguous card that everyone thinks they know, but they don't. The entire Discord is going nuts for this question right now. Blue Bomber is all over flying. Patrick is jumping in. I feel like we're playing fantasy football right now. Well, that's because you just recently started playing. (laughs) Patrick says ground. Your dad says flying. Blue Bomber said flying. So I think, so, so the consensus is we made the right decision. I won round one. You won round two. It's clearly a split answer. So congratulations, sir. You too, man. We are even in all aspects of the winning and losing spectrum. Indeed we are. And that's it for this week's MetaCheck. As always, we didn't have time to talk about everything, so we will leave the MetaCheck in the show notes. So be sure to check it out and let us know if you have any questions. We will try to respond. Dude, that was a ton of fun. That was a ton of fun. But you know what else is a lot of fun? Tell me. We got some chests. Test, 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 test. That's right. And I have a crown <laughs> and four big dogs. And I've got a crown and two big dogs. So I guess I'm going first, huh? That's the way this cookie crumbles. <laughs> Do I have to go first twice? Nah, maybe. I may have to. Well... Let's start and see how it goes. All right. Crown chest. 1,029 gold. 
Two gems. Pretty good. Nice. Ooh, 28 minion hordes. It's not bad. It isn't bad. 29 giant snowballs. That's not so great. Ooh, speak for yourself. One dark prince. I feel like the dark prince is a little bit underwhelming right now. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. He needs a little bit of an oomph. He needs a little little oomph factor. Mm-hmm. And last but not least, 12 royal hogs. You've just been getting the underwhelming cards. What are you talking about, man? The royal hogs are nuts now. I don't know how nuts they are. They got nerfed, dude. They're like a nerf nuts. Kinda. Nerfed bacon. Nerfed bacon. But you can't mm -hmm. really nerf bacon. Bacon is just way overpowered all the time. Right. That's fair. So do you want me to go again? Do it. Okay. First up from a big dogs. Are you ready? A giant chest. Nice. <laughs> Ooh, 2,772 gold. That's... <laughs> what's... Why are you laughing? Because, of course, of course, I just got 63 skeleton barrels. Are you kidding me? Why would I joke? Why would I kid about that? Joe, you won that round because of that technicality. That, the game literally has to be listening to you <laughs> and I talk. Isn't... It's just... It's gotta be. Probably not, but maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Conspiracy theorists rejoice. Rejoice. Eleven flying machines. Boom, baby. I don't want to hear any more flying cards, ever. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Wow, 183 royal recruits. Nice. I don't know how, the, I mean, like, those got buffed, right? Kind of? With, with their damage and then the placement, so... I haven't really seen them used too much, but they could be good soon. Right, and actually it's funny because I've been seeing them a lot more often in 2v2s for split pushes because, you know, it works well with that. Um, but now I can get mine to level 10. Nice. Mm-hmm. Last card, 51 Musketeers. Nice. They died yeah. to a poison, but not a fireball. As we all have learned. And if you were wondering, so do the three Musketeers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Joe's still sore about it. <laughs> All right, crown chest. You ready? Ready. 1,071 gold. Two gems. Hmm. Nice. 12 bombers. Okay. 45 goblin gang. I love the goblin gang. Me too. It's such a good, versatile card. Mm hmm. One barbarian barrel. Mm. And 12 fireballs Ooh, nice i mean i just maxed that out but it's cool to you know get to trade for other people now or no i agree without having to worry about it that's pretty it's pretty sweet yep totally agree my turn you're up my turn epic chest boom mm -hmm. four barbarian barrels okay four poisons five Balloons. Oh, I wish I had those right now. <laughs> uh, you didn't get so upset about that flying troop. No, that's a good one. I wish that's mm. what I'm going for right now on my deck. Fair. Ooh, my last card was seven witches. How do you feel about getting witches after the nerf? I think she's really balanced now. B but you don't think underpowered? I don't think so, because I think that she's supposed to be paired with big guys. And when she's paired with the right guys, a lot of damage can happen. Right, but she still survives Fireball Zap, but dies now to Fireball Log. I'm okay with that. A lot of people think she's gotten a lot worse, but I agree mm. with you. I think she's she's definitely worse in the sense that if people are running Fireball Log, that she's tough to stick into the meta, but I still think she's strong um, as an option. Agreed. And guess what? I need one more to upgrade her to level 11. It couldn't have just given me eight witches. <laughs> right, right. I, I think you would have taken one less barbarian barrel for that. Totally, 100%. Um, so you're up. I am up. So let me, let me see. Do you see my epic chest? Do you match it? Do you raise it? What do you do? So I see your epic chest, and I raise you a magical chest. Ooh, I like it. I like your style. 
I have style. First up, 1408 gold. Nice. One, Dark Goblin. Ooh. Two, Inferno Towers. All right, I guess. Three, Barbarian Huts. Nah, never. Yeah, I, I never have and never will use that in a deck. I will never like that card unless it drops to like five elixir. <laughs> right, and still <laughs> provides everything it currently provides. Right. Five Furnaces, not bad. Okay. Seven Valkyrie, she got nerfed, nobody uses her anymore. <laughs> 61 <cares>. Spear Goblins. <laughs> And nine, count them nine, Barbarian Barrels. Ooh, this game likes you with the bar barrels. With the bar barrels. The barbels. Yeah, man. All right, so that's my that's my chest. I got one more, but I think you go next. I do go next. I see your magical chest, and I call your magical chest with another magical chest. Boom. 1,408 gold. Nice. Mm hmm. F this, okay. Five royal recruits. Better than one. Five times better, actually. 25 zaps. Nice. 32 rascals. Five giants. Love giants. One prince. 13 goblin huts. <laughs> Goblin huts fall into the category of barbarian huts for me. Right. And last but not least, ooh, seven baby dragons. Nice. Yeah, dude. Is that card level 11 or 12 for you yet? It's currently level 10, and I'm still a ways away from level 11. But that's okay. I'm working on it. And luckily, I have an epic trade token. I think you should join Cast Royale 2 and trade me loons. I think you should join Cast Royale 1 and just stay there. Why you gotta be so selfish, Rob? <laughs> why, why you gotta do that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you're up, man. I am up. And I, sir, see your magical chest. And I match you with another magical chest of my own from my Ooh, quests. I'm excited. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Another 1,408 gold. Seven royal recruits. This chest is very ironically mirroring yours. 20 mm -hmm. rascals. Four royal hogs. I didn't get that. You did not. 35 minion horde. Mm -hmm. 14 furnaces. Nice. Three goblin giants. Hey, you got the new card. Oh my gosh. And five mirrors. Ooh, see? This is what happens when you talk smack about the mirror battle. I shouldn't have. Yep. <laughs> yep. Totally agree. Yeah. Well, that was a sour note. Luckily, I go last. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Great way to end my chest openings. But yep, yeah. you can go next. Can I tell you that I've been holding on to this quest chest for two, I think maybe two and a half to three weeks? Because we didn't do chest openings last time? I have. A super magical chest. Bada, bada. Boom. Boom. Here we go. Oh, it still blows my mind how much gold it gives you. 7,128 gold. That's hefty. Yeah. 11 furnaces. Okay. 13 wizards. See? We shouldn't have talked about this card, Joe. 32 goblin huts. Hmm. You know what's coming next? It's don't, called even barbarian say it. don't even say huts. it. Don't even say it. Don't even say it. Too late. Mm hmm. Wow. 606 bombers. That is an insane amount of bombers. An unnecessary amount of bombers. <laughs> Ask me what my bombers level is. <laughs> if I had a guess, I'd say seven. Nah. Nine. Nine. Guess how many I have? 2,342. 8,322. That is ridiculous. Yeah. 103. Three musketeers. Did you know that those died to poison? <laughs> yeah, I kind of knew that. <gasps> no. Yes. 
Do you have a legendary token still? No, I don't, but a lot of people have been asking me for uh, for miners to trade, so now maybe I can uh, negotiate for another log. Mm -hmm. Get yourself to 6 of 10. Yeah, I don't think I can ever be mad at any legendary now that legendary tokens exist. I totally agree, because you know there's someone out there that wants something that you don't want. Exactly, but I still have one more card. What? And I'm, I'm lost why this game still does this. Are you ready? Yeah. Grand finale. <laughs> it's certainly not bad, but it's ironic. 26 poisons. <laughs> of course. That's a <laughs> lot of poisons, man. 26 of an epic? That's Yeah, dude. That's, that's your 25%. Yeah, and now I'm at 35 out of 50 to get to level 11. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, that was pretty good. I'm very happy about that. What a phenomenal chest opening. For you. For me. But yeah, I mean, that's all that matters. As long as one of us does good in the chest opening, I think it's a successful chest opening. Think about all the chests that we open that aren't good for both of us. It just so happens that one of us gets a good time this time. Boom. Right. And I just was able to use all of my quests again to get through a gold chest, and I got another balloon. Now you're just rubbing it in. All right. Let's move on to our... Deck Spotlight. Deck Spotlight. And this deck is called Fresh Prince of Mortair because the prince just moved from West Philadelphia, baby. And it's a 3.1 average elixir cost deck that contains, you guessed it, the prince, the mortar, spear goblins, goblin gang, the miner, fireball, bats, and the log. So Joe, Tell me how you became the prince of a town called Mortaire. <laughs> Love it, dude. So this <laughs> deck is super awesome. Uh, and it is fresh, just like its name. Because I think previously, the only time you would see a prince in a deck might have been the giant double prince deck. Very rarely it might have been seen in a golem prince deck, but not often at all. This has quickly become a grand challenge special with almost a 90% win rate in Grand Challenges. The Prince, ever since he got his buff, combined with the Valkyrie and the Witch nerfs, have really made this card very prevalent in the current meta. But since we are going a little bit over on time right now, we'll talk in a condensed format about the deck spotlight. We will be sure to include a good write-up about how to play the deck within the show notes so that you can be sure to check it out and learn the deck there. But the easiest way to describe this deck is that the Mortar is an annoying building, right? I mean, at the end of the day, no one likes to play against mortar decks. Right. The only tank that you have in your deck is the prince. So when you have to tank something, that's the card to tank with. The rest of the cards are just annoying. Spear goblins, goblin gang, miner, bats. Three of those cards wind up being bait cards. They die to either zap or log. And what you're going to find with this deck is that your opponent is going to have a hard time figuring out what to zap versus arrows versus fireball versus log. Because if they choose to zap your bats, well, they don't have that for the prince now, and they can't stop his charge, which forces mm -hmm. them to use a ground troop to stop it. If they use the zap on the bats, well, then they also don't have it for the spear goblins. If they use the log on the spear goblins, then they lose that for the goblin gang and the, and the prince. And to be totally honest with you, it doesn't really matter which one of these they decide to fireball or zap or log because there's always another one to annoy the living daylights out of your opponent. Mm -hmm. But what makes it even crazier is that you have the miner, the one card in the game that takes one troop like a skeleton, a little Larry, and makes him do tremendous amounts of damage to a tower. And what I mean by that is if you can time your miner placement after your opponent has used the log or zapped something that maybe they shouldn't have, Throwing in the miner, slapping it onto the tower, and allowing your other troops to get onto the tower, allow it to just deal absolutely massive damage. The mortar itself should be used just like any other mortar would be played. The prince should be used on defense. should not be used for crazy amounts of offense. It should be used for defense, protect the mortar, and go on an offensive counter push. With this deck, proper timing, spacing out of troops, and placement, those three things are going to be key 
to allowing your opponent to not get value with their spells. If they get too much value with their spells, this deck will crumble and fall very, very quickly. If you can space out your troops well, force zaps to come out and only kill spear goblins or bats and not both, and not combine your prince with your goblin gang when they have a log, right? Like, space your troops out, time them after the the counter has been played. It becomes a very annoying deck for your opponent to play against. And if you haven't mastered that skill yet, this is a perfect deck to try and practice that because you need to be able to do that with this deck. Totally agree. And chances are you're going to lose a ton of games when you're trying to play this this deck. It's it's not a low skill cap deck. It's a high skill cap deck, but it's got a very high reward. And I mean, in the current meta, you see a ton of three musketeer beatdown decks. And this deck has just that. It's, it's got the counter to that in the, in the fireball and the log. You know, if you do wind up seeing witches, you, you, you've got the fireball log to kill that now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, zappies used to be extremely prominent in the meta. Fireball takes care of them. Royal hogs, Rob, you said that they're still used in the meta, which they are used in the meta, just not as prominently. Fireball takes them out and allows you to deal with them. Fireball log actually kills them. So, you know, there are a lot of good counters here. The, the decks that you'll struggle with a bit here are heavy heavy beatdown decks and that's because you have to use your mortar defensively and use your prince defensively and then really space out your troops um, to make sure that they're able to kill the tank but if you play on the offense and keep your opponent on their back foot this is the deck that really allows you to keep the advantage sounds like it and i really appreciate that it's very similar in cost to the regular mortar mauler deck so you're right it's a it's a pretty fast cycle deck it is a fast cycle deck, and it's it's crazy to think about. I mean, 3.1 average elixir cost, it's a true cycle deck, but it can either be a prince cycle deck, it can be a mortar cycle deck, it can be mm-hmm. a fireball cycle deck, it can be a minor fireball cycle deck. I mean, it, it, it can be so incredibly versatile. Whatever you need in the moment, you can get back to very quickly. Right. And, and that's what makes it so powerful and absolutely frustrating for your opponent to deal with. I'm excited to try it because, you know, you know, Mortar's one of the few cards that we both have maxed, so this is definitely something that I could see myself eventually taking on the ladder faster than other decks. I agree, man. I'm just looking forward to moving to the town of Mortair. Ooh, sounds like a fun place this time of year. Boom. Boom. Nice job. Thanks, man. So, we got two, count them, two new Patrons! Two new patrons! Huge shout out to Dan W. and Hans G. Dan and Hans, thank you so, so much for taking your hard-earned money and supporting what we do so that Rob and I can continue to deliver fresh, fun, and family-friendly content to our listeners. We truly appreciate it. Boom. Boom. And also a huge shout out to Mitchell J for sending us a PayPal donation. PayPal donation. Yeah, man. Doesn't happen often, but when it does, it feels fantastic. So Mitchell, thank you so much for sending us your hard-earned money to help us deliver content to all of our wonderful listeners. Double boom. Mm-hmm. 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 And that's it, man. This was a pretty monstrous episode. Yeah, it was. We covered it all. We did. Like champs. From the sound of a tree. Falling in the woods to comparing the skeleton barrel to the black and blue or white and gold dress. We covered it all, man. We did. Indeed, we did. Uh, so if you would like to join our Discord, you can go to castroyalepodcast.com slash Discord. And that's where you'll see the latest schedule changes as well as get notifications when we have open spots in our clans. And as always, you can reach out to us on Twitter using the handle at Podcast Royale. Or maybe you prefer email. Email us at feedback at castrailpodcast.com. And as always, the number one way you can help us reach more people is by leaving us an iTunes review. And huge shout out to clnsmedia.com for hosting our show on their site. If you're looking for the latest episodes, you can find them there. Or if you're looking for new podcasts, you can also find them there as well. And last but not least, a huge shout out to RX Bar for sponsoring our show tonight. Joe, we're done. I'm exhausted. You look like you're about to fall asleep in your chair as we speak, yawning at me. What'd you say? I was yawning. Right. So don't forget the next time you hear us in your speaker will be in October. And until next time, we will see you for another hodgepodge of everything. Hodgepodge of everything. Boom. Boom. Bye. Bye.